Hello gang, a very warm welcome to another instalment from the channel that is Jono's Graveyard Jaunts. In today's video I'm in the northwestern part of the UK in the county of Lancashire which at the height of the Industrial Revolution was known for producing cotton and therefore had a plethora of cotton mills throughout the county. Now Manchester, which is the UK's third largest city, lies in the northwest and sits in the county of Lancashire and was once known as Cottonopolis due to the city becoming the epicentre of cotton production in the county. Now the first map shows where the county of Lancashire sits in relation to the UK and the second map shows where the town of Blackburn sits in relation to the county of Lancashire itself. Now, in today's video, I shall be talking about a man who was originally born in London, but spent some time in Lancashire, specifically the town of Blackburn in the county. Now, this person's claim to fame is that he grew to a staggering height of 7 foot 9.3 inches, and as a result became known as the Blackburn Giant in the area. The person who is the topic of today's video is a man by the name of Frederick Kempster. So who was Frederick Kempster? Where was he from and how did he become so indelibly linked to the town of Blackburn in Lancashire? Now Frederick's story itself begins in Bayswater, London. He was born to Joseph and Jane Kempster on April the 13th, 1889 and was one of eight children. Frederick being the second youngest of the Kempster clan. Now Jane, his mother, would describe him as, I quote, a jolly laughing boy of a very liberal and generous disposition. But it seemed that her love for Frederick could only do so much good. Now remember, this was Victorian England. In London, it was the epicentre of petty crime, thievery and the smog of industrial Britain and tragedy could cause massive social upheaval in working class families. Now, Frederick was only eight years old when his father died from bronchitis on Christmas Day, 1897, and his father was just 50 years old. Now, his mother had no way of feeding the three remaining children, as she had at home her 12-year-old daughter, Susan, Frederick, and his younger brother, George, who was two at the time. Now, Jane tried to earn a living doing housework and laundry, moving her family into a stuffy one-room apartment in Islington, but she could not earn enough money, even for her meagre living space, so she was eventually evicted. Susan was taken in by her older sister Emily and her husband Sid, leaving Frederick and George with their mother, who applied for help at Bernardo's Commercial Street Shelter in the East End of London. Now, Bernardo's was known in the 19th century by its rather wordy title of, and I quote, National Incorporated Association for the Reclamation of Destitute Wave Children, and it was established in the East End of London in 1866 by Dr Thomas Bernardo. Now, the doctor had wanted to find a place which cared for children who had been orphaned by a recent cholera outbreak, but by the end of the century it had grown into a larger network of orphanages, now the time was September 1898 when Frederick and George were handed over to the institution. Both boys were reported to be in good health and nine-year-old Frederick was said to be just over four feet tall. The two boys were placed in the receiving house in Stepney, East London before Frederick being older and more able than his infant sibling was sent to Leopold House in October. The following year, in 1899, as a 10-year-old child, Frederick boarded the SS Scotman and sailed, Scotsman and sailed to Canada, arriving at St John in April. There was a general consensus that children, especially those without parents, would do better in the agricultural heartlands and British colonies in North America, 
rather than the urban squalor of London. British orphans were often made to work on farms or be to become domestic servants. And in October of that year, he was placed with a Mr. Allen in the Canadian province of Manitoba, where he spent the next five years. Frederick was forced to return to England in November of 1904, aged 15 years. He was now unfit for farm work due, at a, due to a congenital knee problem that caused problems with his ligaments and growth at the upper end of the tibia. It was possible that Frederick had shown symptoms of agromegaly or giantism. Agromegaly is a rare condition where the body produces too much growth hormone, causing body tissue and bones to grow more quickly, which led to Frederick's abnormal height. An operation was performed at Her Majesty's Hospital in Stepney, London, upon his arrival back in the UK, and the operation caused Frederick to develop a lame left leg which he would live with for the rest of his life, and therefore he required a special support shoe on his left foot, which can be seen in a lot of his photographs. In April of 1905, he was able to return to work at Bernardo's Youth Labour House at Commercial Road in East London. On the 22nd of March 1911, replying to a letter from his mother Jane, Bernardo's reported that Fred was living at the Boys' Garden City at Woodford Bridge in Essex, where he worked as a basket maker. He would later move in with his sister, Ruth, in Wiltshire. Now, at 21 years old, Frederick was well over seven feet in height, and the next eight years would shape his entire legacy. In May of 1911, Frederick's abnormal height and shocking growth first caught the attention of the public when he was part of the Festival of Empire a celebration held at Crystal Palace in the run-up to the coronation of King George V. Now, Frederick was the tallest giant on the show, and it became clear to Frederick that his height could make him a great deal of money, and he joined Astley & Co., the American travelling circus, in August of 1911. Now, Frederick travelled across England from 1911 to 1913, in which time he grew another five inches, reaching the height of 7 feet 9.3 inches. Now, Astley Circus would grossly exaggerate his height, claiming he exceeded 8 feet, and the newspapers lapped up the hyperbole. One reporter claimed that the Blackburn giant was 11 inches from wrist to the tip of his fingers, had a 50-inch chest, and could span 16 notes with one hand on a piano keyboard. Another said that a six foot two inch tall man could walk under his outstretched arms and that a normal breakfast for Kempster would be four loaves of bread plus six eggs. One report stated that Frederick's long johns were five foot long. Locals near his Essex home even claimed his house had been made out of a boat. Even Frederick himself lied about his height, something which was common amongst circus giants at the time with the former Bernardo's orphan claiming he was 8 foot 2 inches tall. But through all the frenzy and exaggeration, Frederick seemed to be riding the wave of partial celebrity. He was a subject of newspaper articles and postcards. Even Bernardo's published a set of at least four postcards featuring images of Frederick, noting that he was now probably the tallest man in the world. And Frederick himself was enjoying the benefits of his newfound fame. He had rebuilt a relationship with his mother Jane and he spent his time playing cricket and football. He was even a reserve goalkeeper for Swindon Town at one point. In 1914, Frederick and his travelling circus embarked upon a world tour. Having previously visited Berlin with his German manager Otto K. E. Heinemann, who would later establish Oko Records, now owned by Sony, Frederick was seen to return to Central Europe. And whilst in Germany, Fred performed under his pseudonym of Teddy Bobs. Unfortunately, his return to the German Empire took a turn in August when war broke out in Europe. And as an Englishman, Frederick became the enemy and was placed under house arrest. Now, papers in England, already stoking the fires of war propaganda against the Germans, claimed that Frederick had been placed in a prisoner of war camp by inverted commas cruel German officials and Frederick was able to return to England a month later. 
1916, Frederick had found out that his younger brother George had been wounded whilst fighting on the Western Front and was in hospital in London. He visited his brother with some claim that his height scared the injured soldiers at the hospital. Now Kempster continued to tour the UK where he visited Lancashire for the first time, a visit that would change his legacy forever. Frederick was part of a sideshow attraction attached to a travelling fair in Blackburn in 1917 when he contracted influenza. Now when the press heard he was in hospital in 1917, they took a picture of him in the hospital bed made up of two beds pushed together. Stories of Kempster in hospital reached the press across the world as far afield as New Zealand where newspapers claimed that Frederick had eaten all the food for the entire ward. Now Frederick's influenza progressed to pneumonia and he would die in Queen's Park Hospital the following year, 1918, before the Great War could reach its natural conclusion. And throughout his travelling, touring and performing, Frederick seemed to flit from place to place and with his crippling illness, the year or so he spent in Blackburn represented a rather long time for the giant in comparison to his other haunts. Now, in reality, Frederick was never actually from Lancashire or indeed spent much time there, but he was dubbed the Blackburn Giant because he spent a rather painful year dying in the town. Now, we have a little notion of what effect Blackburn had on him or his relationship with the North West, but Frederick was certainly put down some roots there. He had a friend called Tom Cook who somehow inherited Frederick's massive long johns, which were auctioned off by Tom's nephew, John Darnine from Clitheroe in 2012, and they were in turn bought for £550. So Kempster actually died then, aged 29, in Queen's Park Hospital, Blackburn in 1918, and was buried in a 9-foot, 2.7-metre coffin in a 10-foot, 3-metre grave in Blackburn Cemetery. Now, case notes, case notes themselves from the hospital stated Kempster was 7-foot, 7-foot, 9.3 inches, 2.37 metres in height when he died. And Frederick also weighed 170 kilograms or 370 pounds. Now his gravestone interestingly refers to him as the British giant rather than the Blackburn giant. And much like his height and reports of his eating habits, the papers embellish details of Frederick's death, claiming that his imprisonment in Germany had caused him to fall ill. Even though the doctors were able to confirm that Frederick was seven foot nine, Papers still continue to claim that it was more than eight foot tall, even after his so death. Here we are at the final resting place of Frederick John Kempster in Blackburn, Lancashire, Blackburn Old Cemetery. Now the grave itself, as you can see, it's actually 10 foot long. And poor Frederick uh, was just 29 years old when he passed. He basically died from pneumonia. He was actually uh, 7 foot 9.3 inches tall um, when he passed away and he's actually referred to as you can see on the grave as the British giant rather than the Blackburn giant. Rest in peace Frederick. Now that concludes the video guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment. Now it's obviously free to subscribe to the channel, it just helps the channel to grow and obviously means we can venture further afield to produce ever more interesting content for you as the viewer.